Hello everyone, I am Shubham Garg and welcome back to the lecture series of DHCH software. So in this lecture we will going to see the working of an NMOS. Uh, in the previous lectures we have looked at the working of a PMOS. Okay, so here you can see on my screen the schematic of NMOS and when I run it, it is giving a strong zero and weak one value. Alright, so uh, if you have seen my previous video, then you have seen that the PMOS gives a strong one and a weak zero value. Whereas with the case of NMOS, uh, it is giving a strong zero value and a weak one value. So you can see uh, when we supply one towards a gate of an NMOS, uh, it becomes short circuited. All right. Remember in the case of PMOS, when we supply zero, then uh, it becomes short circuited. Okay. But in case of NMOS, when we supply one, it becomes short circuited and gives a strong zero. Wherever, whereas in PMOS, when we supply zero, it becomes short circuited and gives strong one. All right. So uh, let me just drag a PMOS here as well to uh, let you visualize everything. Okay. So I will just rotate it. Yeah. So remember, when we are uh, running the schematic, running the simulation, what is happening in the case of NMOS? When I supply one towards the NMOS, the NMOS is becoming short circuited and it is giving me a strong zero. Whereas in the case of PMOS, let us complete this circuit. Okay, this is the, uh, I am making the same circuit I made in previous video. So that uh, we can compare both PMOS and NMOS. All right. Here is our capacitance and finally the LED. And here the ground. Yeah. So I will just connect it through wire. Right. So now here you can see when I supply strong, when I supply one towards the NMOS, it becomes short circuited and the output is strong zero. However, in PMOS, when I supply zero, it becomes short circuited and the output is strong one. Similarly, in PMOS, when I apply strong one, okay, the output, uh, it becomes open circuited and output is weak zero. All right. And in the case of NMOS, when I supply zero, it becomes open circuit and the output is weak one. All right. So I hope now uh, comparing PMOS and NMOS parallelly uh, have given you insights on how PMOS and NMOS are actually working. Okay. So this is, uh, this could be, this can be a confusion in many students, uh, in the minds of many students. So I hope it will be clear now. So uh, now we will see how I made this uh, NMOS circuit. All right, although it is fairly simple and is visible uh, to everyone, but I will just delete everything and will make it from scratch. Okay, so I hope the working of PMOS and NMOS is clear. And now we will develop the NMOS from scratch. Okay, so first of all, to do that, drag and drop the NMOS. Okay. And uh, I will just rotate it and show pin names. Now, next thing what you need to do is you need to supply a voltage towards the NMOS. This is our input voltage and there is a resistance. Like this. And then you need to supply the input towards the gate. So here is our input button, which will be connected on the gate. Now about the LED, uh, as we always know that LED, uh, we, the output is connected towards the drain. So you see this is a drain terminal and there is the output connected. And here we are going to provide the ground. Okay, so I will just rotate it as well. Yeah. So this is how uh, we made our NMOS. You see the input is connected towards the gate, output LED is connected to drain. 
okay and this is our basic nmos so we will just run the simulation and we can see when zero is supplied towards the nmos uh, there is a weak one value but when one is supplied there is a strong zero value so this is how our nmos is actually working and a pmos is working so now you can see uh, half work is done by pmos and half of the work is done by nmos like uh, nmos is giving a strong zero and pmos is giving a strong one okay and that's why we use the pmos these properties of pmos and nmos together to create an inverter that is a cmos inverter all right where their cmos that's why cmos stands for complementary mosfet that is whatever circuit you are me, uh, making there is always a complementary circuit of that one as well that is if we are using one pmos there is one nmos in an inverter if we are designing any and gate or nand gate if there are two pmoses or there are n number of pmoses then there will be n number of nmos also that's why they are called complementary mosfet that is cmos logic complementary mosfet logic the both the upper side and down uh, downward side are complementing each other okay so we we are using both of their properties to get uh, the desired output so i hope now the working of an mos is clear okay i will end the simulation and from the next lecture we will see how an inverter works and we will design an inverter again from scratch and after that we will move towards the designing of other logic gates or high level circuits as we proceed all right so this is all for this lecture thank you very much